السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹیچ یو تجوید القرآن ان انگلش ان تجوید القرآن وی ہیف ٹوینٹی نائن لیٹرس ان عربک لینگویج اینڈ دیئر آر سیونٹین آرٹیکولیشن پوائنٹس فار دیز ٹوینٹی نائن لیٹرس اینڈ وی آر سپوز ٹو آرٹیکولیٹ ایوری letter from its proper articulation point and after that we have different sifat and they are called sifati lazma mutawada it means opposite mandatory characteristics opposite mandatory characteristics these are a kind of uh, characteristics uh, in every letter of Arabic language if we when we articulate uh, Arabic letters and if we don't uh, take care of these characteristics of these letters uh, then we cannot articulate Arabic letters in proper way and as a result uh, our letters uh, will not be proper and uh, we will not be able to read the holy quran with proper pronunciation so for that purpose this is a uh, you can say tajweed is like uh, you can say phonology of uh, arabic language when you learn these things so then you will be able to read the holy quran with tajweed which is obligatory because if we don't take care of uh, the proper pronunciation of uh, Quran then people from different language background they will change the holy Quran and uh, then you will not be able to understand the holy Quran when it is read from different people So for that purpose tajweed is important and that's why if you collect uh, uh, one, one person from all the continents and they read Holy Quran with tajweed, they will read in the same way. So now here I'll uh, teach you uh, Sifati Lazma Mutawada. So we have uh, basically we have uh, uh, 10 Sifati Lazma Mutawada. Sifati Lazma Mutawada, it means that uh, we have divided all these 29 letters in two groups. So in one letter, if uh, one characteristic is found and in the other will be found another characteristics and or you can say uh, the opposite characteristic of the first one. For example, these are five characteristics in one letter in these are five characteristics in one letter so these five characteristics are opposite of these five characteristics and uh, the uh, the names of these characteristics are for example in one letter there will be hams in the other will be jahar so hams jahar in the other letter will be shiddat in the other will be rehwat استعلاء استفال اطباق انفتاح اغلاق اسمات so these are 10 characteristics 5 are opposite of 5 for example hams jahar shiddat rikwat استعلاء استفال اطباق انفتاح اغلاق اسمات so these are 10 characteristics I will uh, teach you these are 10 characteristics and they will be opposite of each other and this class I'll teach you just uh, four so first one is hams hams is a characteristic in these letters and this is an acronym of those letters in these are ten letters and the acronym is fahathahu shakhsun sakat it means uh, all these letters have this characteristics hams fahathaha shin khaswat sin kafta these are 10 letters and uh, there is uh, the characteristics of hams they are called hurufi mahmusa so what is uh, the meaning of hams hams it means weakness you can say weakness a kind of weakness whenever we articulate uh, these letters uh, 
so here will be a sort of weakness for example if you say fa af ah here is a little bit weakness and as compared to these latter this is called jahar and this is opposite of this these two characteristics of opposite of each other because here is weakness and here is strongness so in these letters will be weakness and in these letters will be strongness strongness for example all the letters they uh, we have 29 letters so 10 are 10 letters are mahmusa and 19 letters are majhura so they are when we articulate these letters from their articulation point so there will be a strongness and the sound is stopped here while there while there will be a weakness and the voice or the sound will be continue for example you compare these uh, 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 you can say seen with za now you see za seen and za they are the letters of the same makhraj swad za seen they are huruf safir their makhraj their articulation point is the same but here they are different in these characteristics so in seen you can find hams and see za you can find jahar in the basis of these characteristics these letters uh uh these letters uh, these uh, letters are articulated differently otherwise they have the same articulation point but on the basis of these characteristics they are different from each other so here is uh, hams and here is jahar so when we articulate this seen so it articulated uh, from its articulation point to with the weakness and uh, the sound is continue for example you can say as as the sound is continue and here is weakness as and here as as now you see as the sound is stopped here and here is strongness so when we compare this scene with za so they are opposite of each other likewise all these letters which are in mahmusa they are opposite of them so this is hams and this is jahar now come to this one shiddat and rakhwat they are opposite of each other shiddat mean hardness shiddat hardness and uh, the letters in which we can find uh, hardness uh, in arabic language there are eight letters in they are uh, the acronym is ajidka qabta hamza jim dal kaf qaf qaf ta ba ta these are the letters uh, which are uh, uh, called shadida hurufi shadida and what does it mean when we articulate uh, these letters <coughs> sorry when we articulate uh, these letters uh, here will be a sort of hardness for example you can say aj aj ad as compared to these letters there will be softness rakhwat mean softness so hardness and softness for example if you compare dal with the sa you see dal ad here is hardness ad and as ad as so they are opposite of each other now you shouldn't be confused for example uh, if you find uh, this characteristic in these letter and now uh, this uh, the same uh, letter is here for example this is ha here and this is ha here how is it possible you can consider these characteristics uh, like you consider uh, these characteristics like two persons i give you this example to make you understand how a letter can come here and how a letter can come here so these are different characteristics then you can consider this is one person and this is another person so you can say this is hasin the name of a person and this is jamil the name of a person this is hasin and this is jamil these are two persons so this hasin is a person who has a, a little bit uh, uh, temperament and here is soft uh, you can say here is weakness in his characteristics 
this uh, has seen is a uh, tem uh, his uh, temperament here is weakness but in Jamil here is a uh, you can say strongness in his uh, temperament and again in the temperament of Jamil is hardness he is weak weaknesses in his temperament but here is also hardness in his temperament and here is strongness in Jamil temperament but here is also softness in his characteristics so you can find uh, many letters in which you have uh, uh, this characteristics and also this characteristics this one not this one but you cannot find a letter that uh, they will have the opposite characteristic for example if a letter is here it will not be here but it can be here okay and likewise uh, 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 if a letter is here it cannot be here but it can be here so in this way you can understand and uh, it is easier now i am going to recite uh, uh, a small uh, surah of the holy quran and you will note different characteristics of these ladder bismillahirrahmanirrahim qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq min sharri ma khalaq wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab wa min sharri naffathati fil uqad wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad and I teach uh, you in English because uh, as you know that English is spoken throughout the world and uh, most of the people understand in uh, understand English language and as you know Islam is a universal religion and uh, Quran is our holy book so that's why I teach the Jewish Quran in English to send my message uh, to the world and uh, those people who have different uh, language background and if they understand English a little bit they will be able to learn Tajweed Al-Quran and read the Holy Quran with Tajweed which is obligatory on every Muslim as you know that in Arabic language we have just uh, 29 letters and the whole Quran is composed of these uh, 29 letters so whenever you learn the proper pronunciation and proper articulation of these 29 letters you will be able to read the Holy Quran and recite the Holy Quran in proper way which language you have but if you don't follow the rules of Tajweed and you read and you have different language so you will not be able to read the Holy Quran in proper way that's why it's obligatory Tajweed is obligatory and I am going to teach you different characteristics of different letters as I have started a series so in this series I am going to teach you Sifati Lazma Mutawaba it means that opposite mandatory characteristics we have uh, different letters of Arabic language from Alif up, uh, up to Ya 29 letters and uh, there are different Maharaj Maharaj means articulation points and then when we articulate uh, these letters from these different articulation points uh, so we have uh, uh, for example uh, two or three letters from the same articulation point but they are different for example we have swat za seen to dal ta wa dal tha for example wa dal tha these three letters have the same makhraj the same articulation point but they are different uh, likewise to dal ta they are three letters 
from the same articulation point but they are different letters they are different on the basis of these characteristics which i am going to teach you so these different characteristics make these letter different from each other for example we have swad swad now swad it has istala istala mean thickness and we have also seen it has istifan now swad swad when we articulate this letter swad swad za sin even though their articulation point is the same swad za sin but uh, here in swad is istala but in sin is istifal it means whenever we articulate swad it has thickness when we articulate sin it has a thinness so on the basis of these thickness and thinness these two letters are uh, different from each other so we have uh, different uh, mandatory characteristics uh, and we have 10 characteristics which are opposite of each other for example uh, we have uh, hams jahar shiddat rihwat istila istifal itbaq infitah idlaq ismat it means that uh, uh, in some letters will we have ya yeah, istila itbaq idlaq in the other we have istifal infitah ismat they are opposite of each other it means that this characteristic is opposite of this this characteristic characteristic is opposite of this and this characteristic characteristic is opposite of this but this characteristic is not opposite of this or this characteristic is opposite of this no they are just opposite of these okay so here today i'll teach you these are uh, uh, you can say six characteristics but two are opposite of each other this one to this one this one to this one it means that if you find uh, istila in swad you will not find istifal in swad swad will not be here because if here is istila thickness in swad so here will not be istifal in swad here will not be thinness so they are opposite of each other if here is istila here will be istifal in these letters now it means istila this is one characteristic and this characteristic is found in these seven letters khassa dhat qiz this is the acronym kha sad dhat ghain ta qaf za and they are called huruf mustaliya whenever we articulate these letters there will be you can say the bottom of your tongue the bottom of your tongue raises toward your palate the bottom of your tongue raises toward your palate because of which uh, the articulation of these letter letters become thick for example you can say kha swad not uh don't think about the articulation point articulation point we have already discussed uh think about uh, the uh characteristic the root of the tongue raises toward the palate because of which these letters become thick swad bad ghain ta and as compared to these root of the tongue does not raise toward the palate because of which these letters are thin they are articulated in thin way for example you say you see ta sa dal zal ra za now you see seen sheen as compared to these letters so these are opposite of each other now come to this itbaq so itbaq it also it means uh, the middle of your tongue touches the palate here bottom of the tongue but here middle of the tongue touches the palate because of which uh, these letters become more thick for example swad wad 
Twa, Zwa. These letters are also here. Swa, Dwa, Twa, Zwa. Because of which here is istila, but Kha, uh, Gain, and Kaf. Here are, but here are not. Because in Gain, Kaf, and Kha, there is not itbaq. They have in Fitah. So, when uh, the middle of your tongue touches the palate, so uh, it itbaq means touching. Mutbiq touching so these letters become uh, more thick and in fitah it means uh, open in fitah open so the middle of the tongue does not uh, touch the palate and uh, that's why these letters are articulated uh, uh, a little bit uh, thinness as compared to them but uh, here you see Qaf, Kha are here but uh, they are also here and as I told you they are opposite of these two they are opposite they, they, they are not opposite of this is not opposite of this you can find a letter here and you can find also that letter here like you see Kha is here and Kha is also here because they are not opposite of each other but they are opposite of each other so Kha is here here is not Kha and here is Swad and Swad will not be here but you can find Swad here they are not opposite of each other they are opposite of each other now come to Izlaq Izlaq in these are um, you see these are four letters and these are 25 letters and now izlaq farra min lubbin izlaq mean slipping a sort of slipping so these letters are articulated from their articulation point uh, with uh, such a facility that uh, you will feel that uh, letters are slipping like f r m in al ab like this so here is a, a sort of slipping and they are called hurufi muzliqa and they are six now opposite of this is ismat ismat means silence so these letters are articulated uh, in a uh, sort of uh, uh, silence uh, but uh, they are strong they are articulated from their articulation point uh, with a little bit uh, strongness uh, and but they are silent so this is called Ismat and uh, in these six letters uh, in these uh, six letters here is Farra min lubin Farra min nun lam ba here is Izlaq and the remaining 23 letters have Ismat so these were important uh, characteristics of uh, different uh, letters and in this class I am going to teach you Sifati Lazma Ghair Mutawada. These are some characteristics of some letters which are called Ghair Mutawada. It means they are not opposite of each other. As I, uh, I have already taught that we have 10 Mutawada, 10 uh, characteristics which are opposite of each other but these are seven characteristics in some letters and they are not opposite of each other these characteristics can be found only in these letters which i am going to tell you now so these are seven characteristics in arabic letters uh safir qalqala lean in hiraf takrir tafashi istiqalat now what is the explanation now you see safir safir it means sound of whistle when you are whistling so that sort of sound is created when we pronounce or when we articulate these three letters of arabic language in they are swat za seen if you 
think about these letters when you articulate them or when you pronounce them so a, so a sound of whistle is created like you know whistling like this swad za seen so this is a characteristic found in these three arabic letters and this is called safir in arabic language in tajweed al quran now number 2 is qalqala qalqala is also another characteristic which is found in these five letters qaf ta ba ji dal when these letters are sakin like a uh, like uh, you can say ab ajal ad so here is a jerk in the sound sound making a jerk like you know jerk when uh, you uh, you can say throw a ball on the wall and ball come back to you that is a uh, a sort of jerk or like this jerk so it creates a sort of jerk when we uh, uh, articulate these letters for example we say haq q now this is jerk haq haq at at ab lahab 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 aw jadid the 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 jadid this is called jerk so this uh, characteristic is found in these uh, five letters haqqun haqqun qun haqq q at at ab ab and you will do this this is a characteristic of these letters and you are supposed to express this characteristic when you articulate these letters number 3 is lean waw lean and ya lean lean it means a mildness in the sound mildness mildness or you can say softness or mildness and uh, this characteristic is found in only two letters waw lean and ya lean what is waw lean and ya lean Now you see, look. This is wow, and this is ya. When wow is sakin, above this wow is sukun. So this is wow sakin, and before it is fatha. And here ya sakin, above ya is sukun. So this is ya sakin, and before it is fatha. So before wow sakin fatha and ya sakin fatha, these are called wow ilin and ya ilin. so in this case uh, in these two letters you can find uh, this characteristic lean it means when we articulate uh, these two letters uh, so they are articulated so softly so with mildness that if you want uh, to lengthen them to make mad in them you can make uh, in uh, some cases for example you can say khauf khauf Now you see how very um, with mildness, very softly, how swift. And if you want to lengthen them, you can also do how swift. So that's why they are called harufi lean. And this characteristic is found in these two letters. Now in haraf, in haraf, yes, you know, in haraf, sound is intermingling. In haraf mean. for example when you come here and there here and there this is inhiraf when you are here and then there so this is called inhiraf when you change the place and this characteristic is found in these uh, two letters lam and ra and uh, what is the, this characteristic when you articulate or pronounce lam or ra they are intermingling sometimes uh, lam try to uh to 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 uh, lam la, try to move toward uh, the articulation point of ra and ra try to move the articulation point of lam whenever you articulating them and that's why you have noticed uh, that uh, children usually 
uh, change Ravid Lam when they are talking small children. Why? Because here is a, a characteristic in Hiraf, and because of this in Hiraf, when we uh, articulate these uh, uh, two letters, they are moved toward each other's articulation points. So that's why they are called, uh, this is called in Hiraf. Now, number five, Takrir. Takrir is found only in one letter of Arabic language, and that is Ra. So in Ra, Takrir means tremors. You know tremors. When we articulate uh, Ra, so a sort of a tremors is created in our tongue. Tremors in the tongue. For example, Ar Rahman. Ar Rahim. Now you see this is Ar, this is tremors. Ar Rahim. This is tremors, but this characteristic is found in Ra, but you have to avoid this tremor. In other ways, you have uh, to express these characteristics, but in Ra, you have to avoid this tremors characteristic. You, should, you shouldn't say Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. You have to avoid it. You will say Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. So you have to avoid this uh, takrir. In Tafashi, it means uh, sound is spreading in the mouth. When we articulate sheen, in this Tafashi is found only in sheen. When we articulate sheen, so we say uh, sheen. As Shahada. Yashhaduna. Yashhaduna. Sound is spreading inside your mouth. And the the whole mouth is full of your sound when we articulate sheen. So this is called tafashi sheen. And istitalat. Istitalat is uh, found only in vab. Vab. Sound is lengthening. So as you know that uh, this is the 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 lengthy. The uh, you you can say the lengthiest uh, articulation point. Vab. So as it is lengthiest articulation point, uh, whenever we articulate a word, so the sound is lengthened. It takes uh, more time to produce this letter of Arabic language. Word, word, as you compare to lam, nun, ra, swad, za. So it uh, takes more time, like word, word. So this is called istitalat. Istitalat means to lengthen something. So this uh, uh, were uh, all these characteristics. And Tajweed uh, al-Quran, this is a, uh, you can say, a knowledge in which you learn how to pronounce Arabic letters in proper way. And this is a sort of uh, phonology of uh, Arabic language because when you learn Tajweed you will be able to articulate or pronounce or produce Arabic letters in a proper way as a result you will be able to read the Holy Quran with correct pronunciation which is a great thing. In this class I will teach you two rules one rule related to Lam the letter lam and one rule related to ra. So here are some characteristics in these two letters of Arabic language which are called temporary characteristics. They are called temporary characteristics because these, <coughs> these rules are applied in a certain condition. If that condition is available, this rule is applied. If the condition is not available, the rule is not applied. That's why it is called a temporary rule. Sifati Arza. Rule of Lam. So the rule of Lam is this. This is related to the Lam which is in Allah or Allahumma. So the rule is uh, whenever before the name of Allah, if there is Fatha on this letter or Dhamma on this letter before Allah, for example, this is the name of Allah, 
and this is the letter before it and here is fatha this is called fatha this symbol is called fatha and now you see here the name of allah and uh, before this allah is here this letter ha and on it uh, here is dhamma this symbol is called dhamma here is an i in it so whenever before the name of allah if there is fatha or dhamma in this case we will uh, we will uh, we will read the name of allah with tafkhim with tafkhim tafkhim means with full mouth for example you will say aradallahu aradallahu rafa'ahu allah rafa'ahu allah as compared to this allah bismillah now you see bismillah this is with this is not with full mouth bismillah but if you uh, listen to it aradallahu dallahu rafa'ahu allah likewise uh, in the same way if there is allahumma dalam of allahumma because here in the beginning also the name of allah so if before of allahumma here is fatha or dhamma in that case we will also uh, read this allahumma lam with tafkhim with full mouth like we will say allahumma we will say maryam allahumma because allah before allahumma here is fatha and mim and qalu allahumma now allahumma before it is lam and here is dhamma so in these cases if here is fatha dhamma before the name of allah or allahumma in these cases we will uh bring we will make tafkhim tafkhim means we will read in full mouth like we will say we will speak or we will read like this aradallahu rafa'ahu allah maryam allahumma qalu allahumma this is called tafkhim now if uh, before the name of allah there is kasra this is called kasra this is fatha this symbol is kasra the symbol the shape is the same but uh, fatha is always above the letter and kasra is under the letter so this is kasra and whenever there is kasra before the name of allah so that allah will be read with tarqiq with tarqiq it means that uh, not with full mouth and we will say bismillah bismillah billah now you see b uh ba is here and here is kasra and this is the name of allah billahi bismillah and likewise before allahumma if there is kasra qulillahumma now you see i say and you will notice that what is the difference maryam allahumma qalu allahumma tafkhim qulillahumma qulillahumma maryam allahumma tafkhim qul allahumma tarqiq arada allah rafa'ahu allah tafkhim bismillah billah tarqiq so whenever these conditions are available so this rule is applied and in this case you will read in this way but except the name of allah or allahumma all other lam everywhere they come they will there will not be any tafkhim or tar, there will not be any tafkhim there will be simple way as we read lam for example ma wallahumma da now you see uh, this one ma ma wallahumma ma wallahumma this is not the lam of allah kulluhu qul so this will be read in the simple way with tarqiq but uh, if there is a fatha or dhamma we will read allah with tafkhim and if there is kasra we will read with tarqiq now other rules of ra this is ra ra 
rule of law. Whenever, as we said that fatha dhamma, in the same way, if an ra, there is fatha or dhamma, we will read, we will make tafkhim in ra. For example, we will say, ra'dun, ra'dun, ruziqu. And if uh, here is, uh, this is called shad. If here is shad, so then we will consider fatha or dhamma on it. So we will read if here is fatha or dhamma, still we will read with tafkhim. So we will read uh, these letters or these words in this way. Ra'dun ruziqu dhu mirratin fafirru ila Allah. This is tafkhim. And as come uh, uh, like this, uh, this is ra'dun ruziqu dhu mirratin fafirru ila Allah. Tarzuku, tarzuku. This is one condition. When here is fatha or dhamma and ra. But in some cases, uh, whenever ra is sakin, then we will look at uh, the letter before it. If here is fatha or kasra on the letter before ra sakin, like this. Now you see, tarzuku, yurzakuna. Now, tar, ra sakin, yurzakuna, ra sakin. So, in this case, we will look to this letter before ra sakin. If uh, here is uh, fatha or dhamma, then still we will read with tafkhim. Tar zuku yurzakuna, tar zuku yurzakuna. And if there is kasra and ra, then we will read it with tarqiq, with not full mouth. For example, you will notice rizqun, ra'dun, now you see, ra'dun, this is tafkhim in ra, ra'dun, in rizqun, this is tarqiq in ra, ra'dun, rizqun, uh, ruziqu, anzirin nasa, fil birri, now this is mushaddad, so you, we will notice this uh, kasra here, fil birri, and if Ra is Sakin, and here is Kasra before the letter. Now you see here is Ra Sakin, and before Fatha or Dhamma. But here is Ra Sakin, and before is Kasra. So in this condition, we will also read Ra with Tarqiq. Fir'auna, Shir'atun, Fir'auna, Shir'atun. Now you see, if you compare the pronunciation in give full notes, so you will understand that what is tafkhim and what is tarqiq. For example, if I say tarzuku, tarzuku yurzakuna, this is tafkhim. Fir'auna, shir'atun. In ra, you can see that what is tafkhim and what is tarqiq. So this is tafkhim and this is tarqiq. <coughs> Sorry. So in these two cases, whenever here is fatha or dhamma, we will read ra with tafkhim. And if ra sakin, before it is fatha or dhamma, in these two cases we will read ra with tafkhim. And in case of kasra and ra, like rizqun and virin nasa, or if ra is sakin and before is kasra, so in these two cases we will read ra with tarqiq. So these were uh, special rules for Ra. There, were, there are also a number of other positions and conditions, but uh, they are a little bit uh, uh, needs, uh, they need uh, more detail. But uh, as a, a normal reader, uh, these uh, four conditions are okay for you to learn. So whenever you read the Holy Quran and uh, this condition comes to you, so you will read Allah in that way with tafkhim or with tarqiq and ra with tafkhim and tarqiq so this, uh, these are sifati arza if you want to learn the holy quran with tajweed I can teach you one month course or one week course on mobile everywhere in the world so you can contact me on my this whatsapp or, or you can email me faizquraishi6 at the rate of gmail.com if you want uh, to learn Tajweed or if you recite the Holy Quran, so I 
can uh, teach to you and uh, you will be able to read the Holy Quran with Tajweed and today I teach you a few rules related to Meme Sakin a few Qaeda rules related to Meme Sakin so here we have some rules important rules whenever we read the Holy Quran so we will follow these rules number one Idram number two Ikhfa and number three Izhar. So these uh, three important uh, rules uh, we follow when Mim Sakin comes uh, in front of us when we are reciting the Holy Quran. And uh, number one Idram. Idram. Idram it means uh, to enter one thing into another. For example, uh, uh, if uh, I enter this marker into this lid, so this is called idgham. When I enter into it, this is called idgham. So whenever there is meme sakin, and after meme sakin, if uh, meme comes, we make idgham in these two meme. For example, you look at this. Uh, these two words ilaykum mursalun now ilaykum here is meem sakin this is called meem sakin this is sukun the symbol of sukun is this and it's on this meme so this meme is called meem sakin and after this meem sakin is another meme so whenever we face such a situation we are after meme sakin is another meme we make idgham and it means we enter one meme into another and make one meme and that meme become mushaddad shad like you see ilaykum mursalun this is meme sakin and this is a meme mutaharrik bomma is here when we uh, connect these uh, two words uh, so we make idgham in these two memes and we 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 cannot speak like ilaykum mursalun we say ilaykum mursalun we make idgham ilaykum mursalun now you see here this meme becomes one meme and that becomes mushaddad ilaykum mursalun Wamahum. Now this is Mim Sakin and here is Mim Maksura Kasra. So here we also make Idgham. This Mim is entered into this Mim. So Wamahum Milkum. Wamahum Milkum. Wamahum Milkum. And when we make Idgham, here that becomes Mushaddad. So Ilaykum Mursalun. Ilaykum Mursalun. وَمَا هُمْ مِنْكُمْ Now, إِخْفَى إِخْفَى it uh, means uh, to hide, to hide something. And uh, whenever here is Mim Sakin and after Mim Sakin is Ba, so in this case uh, we make إِخْفَى like وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَنْ يَعْتَصْقِمْ بِاللَّهِ مِيمْ Sakin and Ba. And uh, you can also see in the Holy Quran a small meme on it. It means that uh, here is Ikhfa. And uh, the how you will make Ikhfa? For example, meme is articulated from the dry part of your lips while Ba is articulated from the wet part of your lip. So whenever you make Ikhfa, Ikhfa is made one after Mim Sakin is Ba. So they both of uh, the letters are Shafawiya. Both letters are articulated from the lips Ba Mim. But Ba from the wet side and Mim from the dry side. So first of all we touch uh, dry side and then we uh, slowly come to the wet side and articulate Ba. And we will make ikhfa like وَمَنْ يَعْتَصْقِمْ بِاللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَعْتَصْقِمْ بِاللَّهِ 
وَمَنْ يَعْتَصْفِمْ بِاللَّهِ So you will practice and then you will learn. And after these Mim Sakin, after Mim Sakin, Mim Idgham, after Mim Sakin, Ba, Ikhfa. And uh, except these uh, two letters Mim and B, the remaining uh, letters come except Alif, we make uh, Izhar. For example, you see Falahum Ajuruhum. Izhar, it means to express, to express. So after Mim Sakin, when other letters come like Hamza, uh, Fa, or other letters except these uh, two ba and mim we make izhar like falahum ajuruhum now you see falahum ajuruhum hum mim is izhar express you will express here falahum ajuruhum but here ilaykum mursalun you make idgham but here falahum ajuruhum hum ajuruhum izhar falahum ajuruhum وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي So here is izhar. This is called izhar except alif. Because alif is always uh, sakin. You see, like this alif is sakin. But this is not alif. This is hamza because here is harkat. And alif is always without of any harkat. So after mim sakin, alif cannot come. And uh, accept Alif in these two letters. When the remaining letters come after Mim Sakin, we express Izhar in the articulation of Mim. So these were important Qaeda rules of Mim Sakin. And in this class, I will teach you all the rules related to Noon Sakin. And they are called Sifati Arza. It means temporary characteristics. Sometimes these characteristics are found and sometimes they are not found. So that's why they are called Sifati Arza, temporary characteristics. So one characteristic of Noon Sakin, now I'll teach you. Now you see this is Noon Sakin. For example, if Noon is Sakin, like this An Amta. Now you see An. Here is Noon. And above this noon is the symbol of sukun, and this is called sukun. So this is noon sakin. Like this min hum, here is noon sakin. Like this mi mai yo meno, noon sakin. So this is called noon sakin. And this noon sakin has four important rules which are followed whenever you read. Or recite the Holy Quran and uh, with uh, following these rules uh, there will be a beauty in your uh, recitation of the Holy Quran and it's uh, important now you see how they are so first rule is noon sakin and uh, Tanween is also in noon sakin because uh, if uh, you see uh, uh, two this is a uh, uh, tanween. Uh, uh, you can say uh, this is the symbol of tanween, but this is for uh, above the letter, and this is another tanween uh, under the letter, and this is also tanween. And the sound of this is also like noon. For example, you can say an. So it is like uh, the sound of tanween an. An. We say an. In, un. So it creates the sound of uh, noon. That's why the uh, qaida or rule of noon sakin and noon tanween is same to same like sawa un. Here is a tanween. So the rule is uh, same to the noon sakin. Now this is noon sakin plus tanween. When noon sakin or tanween comes before huruf halqi and as you know huruf halqi are six hamza hamza ha ayn ha ghayn kha these are six letters whenever nun sakin a tanween come before these huruf halqi so we do izhar 
Izhar means express, to express, to show. So in this case, uh, when noon sakin and after noon sakin, uh, there are huruf halqi. So we express noon, we show noon, we articulate noon in a very uh, expressive way. For example, here noon an amta. Now this is noon sakin, and here is ain, and this is harf halqi. So now we will uh, express uh, when we articulate this word. So we will say an amta an. Now you see an. I express noon an amta because here is harf halqi. Min hum. Now you see this is harf halqi and this is noon sakin. This is harf halqi. Min hum. So I will express this noon an amta min hum min ghillin min ghillin. Now. This is harf halqi, so noon will be expressed min ghillin. Likewise, this is a tanween, tanween, sawa'un alayhim. So I will express this tanween, sawa'un alayhim, sawa'un alayhim. Now come to this one, noon sakin plus tanween, idgham. So idgham to enter one letter into uh, uh, basically, idgham idkhalu shay fi shay. When you enter one thing into another, for example, this is marker. I enter into the lead, lead. So this is this is called idgham. In idgham, whenever these uh, six letters come after noon sakin, and these six letters are yar malun ya ra mim lam waw noon. These are six letters. So whenever these six letters come after noon sakin, here we make idgham. Idgham means we enter noon into the coming letter. Like uh, this is noon sakin and this is ya. Now you see here is ya. So whenever one of these letters come after noon sakin, so here we make idgham, enter. Mayu aminu. Now you see mayu aminu. As you compare with min ghillin, here min ghillin, noon is expressed, but here may yu'minu, it is entered, noon is, uh, noon, noon is articulated, but uh, very slightly, and uh, it is uh, entered into ya, may yu'minu, only ghunna is uh, created here, may yu'minu. Mewaliyin. Now you see, wow. Noon sakin, wow. Mewaliyin. Milla dunho. Mir rabbika. Noon sakin after lam. Milla dunho. Mir rabbika. Noon sakin after ra. So here, and here is a little bit difference between uh, uh, these uh, uh, these uh, four letters uh, and these two letters. Yar malun. One is yan mu ya noon mim wow. So in these uh, four letters, whenever we make idgham, that uh, is idgham with ghunna. But here, bila ghunna, with lam ra, milla dunhu mir wabbika. Now you see, milla dunhu mir wabbika, if you compare, may yu'minu min waliyin. Here you can sense ghunna more, but here, you sense no ghunna, milla dunhu, mir wabbika, complete, uh, you can say complete idgham. Wow. We make idgham with ghunna, and here, lam ra, we make idgham bila ghunna, without of ghunna. Now come to this rule, noon sakin and after uh, noon tanween. If here comes ba, the letter ba, we make iqlab. Iqlab means to change, to change one letter with the other, that is called iqlab. So here, now here noon sakin, here is, this is noon sakin and uh, here is ba. So after noon sakin, if here is ba, we will make iqlab mim ba'di. Now, this noon is changed with mean in this case. Mim ba'di. That's why it is called iqlab. To change. To change noon with mim. Mim ba'di. Now you see. This is basically min ba'di. 
but uh, whenever we make a club so in this case we will make a club when afternoon second bar comes we make a club and this is the rule to change noon with me now on this is tanween so tanween and noon second is same to same and after tanween if there is ba so we also make a club now come to this one noon sakin and noon tanween uh, after uh, these uh, letters hurufi uh, halqi hurufi armaloon and ba when the remaining letters come these are 15 letters so these 15 letters come we make ikhfa ikhfa mean to hide we hide noon sakin but a little bit and with gunna then we uh, we we continue gunna but but hide complete noon and we make ikhfa for example this is noon sakin and this is kaf you see kaf is here so after noon sakin if there is these letters we make ikhfa and ikhfa is made like in kuntum here is ikhfa and here is also ikhfa because this is noon sakin and here is kaf here is noon sakin and here is ta ta so here are two ikhfa in kuntum in in now you see here is a gunna and the noon is being hidden and this ikhfa is different from this idgham because in idgham we enter the complete ladder but here we do not enter we hide a little bit and then we articulate with gunna and go ahead in kuntum kitabun kareem this is gunna bun kareem kaf kitabun kareem so these were uh, rules or qaida related to noon sakin and tanween if you are interested in learning the recitation of the holy quran with tajweed i can teach you on mobile anywhere you are in the world you can contact me on my this whatsapp from pakistan and this is my email so you can contact me i'll teach you the holy quran with tajweed to you or to your children on mobile and this is very easy way anywhere you are in the world even if you are traveling still i can teach you so you can contact me thanks for watching allah hafiz